Fishing for common sunfish is, is a lot of fun, and there are so many ways of catching them. For you veteran anglers, you know that the common sunfishes are gorgeous fishes and offer enjoyable fights on light gear, and those slab specimens make good eats. And if you're new to fishing, these are the fishes you'll probably be catching as you are learning the sport here in North America. I will share my easiest and most effective methods for catching each of these beautiful species with rod and reel, explaining techniques, gear, and some simple modifications. I am Koei and this is Kay in Fishing Smarts where we fishers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes and I figured I made a whole free to view Lepimid ID guide for y'all so I might as well show you my techniques for catching these awesome fishes. And because there's actually a lot to share I'm going to divide this into five different videos. In this one we'll discuss the basic gear and the first of the five methods of fishing I enjoy the most. And just this summer, I found what may be the best artificial lure I have ever used for common sunfishes. And I'll actually be sharing that in this video. So first off, let's just start with the rod and reel you want to use. And for you veteran anglers, you can go ahead and skip ahead if you want. I put little chapters in this that you can browse on the bar on the bottom of this video. And I'm going to say something that I will say over and over on this channel. You don't need expensive top-of-the-line gear to catch fishes and have a good time. And that's true, especially as it pertains to lepimids or common sunfishes. I had a lot of fun last year with a $30 combo I picked up in England. Or you can grab that $10 kiddie pole combo at the gas station with the thumb press bail and be good to go. But with that said, if you do decide to take up fishing as a sport or a hobby, a better reel, a better rod, they're just going to make your life a lot easier. Those cheap spinning reels become a hassle over time and once you have a decent spinning reel it just makes fishing so much more enjoyable and relaxing. It's kind of like buying a car. You can go get that cheap used lemon and it'll end up breaking down every week and you stress out about it or you can go get a decent car with a warranty and trust that reliability. Spinning reels as opposed to bait casting reels are preferred by most anglers for panfish. Fly fishing rods are also popular. But if you're a new fisher, it's much easier to learn how to fish using spinning reels. Currently my go-to uh, spinning reel for common sunfishes is this Shimano Nesai C3000. It's smooth, strong, and it gets the job done. And if you know me, you know I'm partial to Shimano. I think 80-85% of the reels I own are Shimano. Just a good brand. So you also want to get a light to ultra light rod with fast action. This light rod type is necessary because you'll be using small baits and lures and you don't want to lose that sensitivity for feeling how your lure is moving in the water as well as when a fish strikes. A medium rod will just offer too much resistance not letting you feel how your bait is working in the water and you might miss hits. A light or ultra light rod also makes fishing for these smaller species a lot more fun. An ultralight rod makes a half pound fish feel like how a five pound smallie feels on a medium rod. And yeah, that is a five pound smallie bass I picked up last month. And that was a fun fight. My go-to rod for uh, common sun fishes is just the St. Koi Triumph. It's a light rod with fast action. I paired that up with the Shimano Nesa I mentioned earlier. And it just makes fishing for common sunfish is smooth and really enjoyable. And there's a lot of great brands out there. Uh, this is just what I prefer. And those are upper end items, but if you prefer cheaper, you can still get decent combos for 50 to 80 bucks at any outdoorsman store. So line wise, you'll be okay with getting some four pound or six pound monofilament line. It's cheap and it will get the job done. I mean, the world record for a lepimid is a red ear, just over five pounds, and that fish is not the world record. That's just a very pretty red ear I caught recently. That's a male in breeding colors. However, I find using monofilament line at any reel a nightmare. It has memory. That means it doesn't have great elasticity. It's more plastic. It means it keeps its shape. That means you get line tangles. It's just 
terrible. So what I do is I go ahead and spool my reels with 10 pound braided line. And then I use a six pound fluorocarbon leader. I pretty much use Power Pro braided exclusively nowadays. And I'm really liking Seaguar's fluoro line. And I know some of you might be scoffing that I'm using 10 pound braided line on a spinning reel for common sunfishes. But that is just my preference. Really, what most ultralight and light fishers are using, if they're using braided, it's a two pound, a four pound, a six pound. Me, I'm so often wanting to catch fishes for my research, my videos, for photos that I don't want to get stuck in snags and have to retie. I'm not caring so much about the fun of the fight, more so about landing the fish, hence why I use 10 pound braided. And fluorocarbon line is expensive, and that's why it's typically only used as a leader, but it's got the perks over mono, it's stronger, less visible, and using it just as a leader is the most effective way of this line type, and you just want to attach that to your other line with a uni to uni knot. I made a video on that, and I will post all the links and everything down in the description below. So here we go, the first method I enjoy using to catch common sunfishes. It's just a weighted jig head and a soft plastic. So these jig heads are fabulous for your bigger specimens within the bigger species like your red ear and bluegill, but they're also gonna work fabulous for your green, your pumpkin seed, your long ear, your spotted. I don't often use them smaller than a size eight hook, so that means I'm not really going for the smaller species, but you can buy smaller versions of these weighted jig heads. And so there are a plethora of weighted jig heads and soft plastic options on the market and the design is fairly simple. A weighted head is molded over an embedded hook that'll then slide on a soft plastic up the shank. So of all the weighted jig head types I've tried in my life, I'm just going to share my two favorite brands because they're effective, they catch fish, and that's, that's really the goal. Less stress, more fish. Firstly, I found that Leland's lures are just great. Uh, their trout and crappie magnets were great for, well, not just trout and crappie, but they are also great for the common sunfishes. And they do have a variety of options for panfish. And I believe it's really how the lure stays flat in the water, even on drops, that makes the presentation that much more enticing to a fish. And a lot of the weighted jig heads just drop awkwardly. So the 1 16th ounce to the 1 32nd ounce heads are ideal weights but you can even go up to an eighth of an ounce if you're uh, only going after the big uh, red ear or bluegill or the larger greens and warm mouth. And getting the heads with the built on barbs at the top of the shank or bait keepers will keep your plastic on better. I caught so many specimens of sunfishes with a simple trout magnet kit. The only downside with these trout magnets was that these jigs didn't come with the built in bait keepers or the barbs on the shank. And so the plastic will really slide down and it'll lose its structural integrity faster. So the easy fix is just to dab a bit of super glue on the shank and then slide your plastic over that. I'm not really a big fan of using super glue because I really feel that that odor, uh, you know, the chemo sensory smelling, that'll be a deterrent to the fish should it miss on the first strike. It'll taste it and not want to go back for a second. So instead what I do is I always have heat shrink in my tackle box in case I need to add my own barbs or do other gear modifications quickly and you can pick up heat shrink tubing for like a buck or two at your local hardware store. I, you just cut a little bit of piece of that tubing then get a little piece of wire or plastic a nail tip and then you bend the tip slightly away from the shank or even some thick mono doubled over or even a trim snell knot will do ya. But uh, you just slide it under the heat shrink tubing that's over the shrink and then heat it up and voila, you have a bait keeper on your shank. Better yet, if you don't want to hassle with that, just get the kits that already have the shanks that have the barb on them, like the crappie magnets. I picked up this kit, which was like 96 pieces or something, uh, including the plastics and the jigs and even some indicators, I believe. I got it for around 13 bucks and it'll have you set for years catching levimids and plenty of crappie if you want. They're durable plastics. They are hardy, the hooks are solid. I really love the durability of this kit. So what you want to do is just stick the point of the hook on the head of the plastic in the middle and then push it through until it pops through the middle of the backside, right where the tails are. 
then slide it right over the barb. Now you, you don't want to come out of the middle of the plastic. You'll miss fish that are only nabbing the tails and the fish won't suck in the hook that way. Make sure it goes through to where the tails emerge and it's symmetrical. Symmetry is always good on a bait. In more turbid waters, I prefer a plastic with at least some red, pink, or orange. In clearer waters, I like something with white and or a chartreuse. And so you just want to attach this lure with a, your preferred terminal knot. A polymer knot is easy to tie or for a bit more security. I've been exclusively using the San Diego Jam Knot on all of my Leopard Mid Rigs the last couple of years. Uh, both those knot ties, I made simple videos so you can learn how to do those as well. So to play this weighted jig head, you have a number of options. Crappie fishers will often vertically fish them with ever so light twitching. I like to do that while I'm drifting uh, to pull up nice crappie and that'll work for common sunfishes too, especially in winter when they're sitting in deeper, warmer water. But I prefer to cast it out because I do a lot of shoreline fishing when going for common sunfishes. The weight of this setup gives you plenty of cast in range. You don't need much action. I prefer to slowly reel in my line with light flicks of my rod tip and then let it sink for a second or two, then repeat. You'll need to set the hook, but it's not a hard hook set. It's more like a gentle sweep of your rod. So a flipping technique is also doable and flipping is a non-casting way of fishing. You just strip out an amount of line and just flip the bait as close as you can to the structure. You're only using your hand, not holding the pole to pull the line back to you instead of reeling in. It's a way of finessing this bait around obstacles and into nooks and crannies. Sometimes those beastly lepamids are just sitting in a little nook and you just have to go put it right in their face over and over until they take it. Sometimes they can be quite stubborn. So now I will share this magical lure that I discovered. And actually, a few months back, I, I wrote to a fisher I know in Alabama, Ray Wilhite. I asked him if he knew, if he had any lures that works well for reddier and heavily populated bluegill waters. And you know, I didn't have something specific, but he referred me to this bait he'd been using that was really great. And so I tried it out, and it's absolutely amazing. This may be the best artificial lure I have ever used to catch panfish. It's Eurotackle's EPF Swim 1-inch Soft Plastic Finesse Swim Bait. Uh, Eurotackle teamed up with Extreme Philly Fishing to create this bait, and it's just a paddle tail plastic with an amazing wiggle. I have landed big bluegill, red ear, warmouth, pumpkin seed, perch, crappie, and so many other species on this lure since I started using it. And I did pair it up with the Eurotackle Micro Finesse Soft Lock Tungsten jig heads. I tried uh, some 16th ounce heads and some 132nd ounce heads with size 6 hooks, and I found both jig heads worked well. I tried three colors of the plastic uh, the pink, black, and a green pumpkin. The pink and the black, wow, amazing. Green pumpkin, you know, it works great, but nothing compared to the pink and the black. And, and that was in a variety of water types from turbid to clear with different species. The only downside to these lures is that they get beat up pretty quickly because they get so many hits. Now that is a good problem to have. Once that tail falls off, it becomes sort of a dud and then you need to replace it. However, there are nine in a pack and it's only like four bucks per pack. Also, the soft lock system on the jig head is designed really to be able to switch off swim baits without damaging them and I found that these Plastics would slide down the shanks still. So what I actually ended up doing was pairing the EPF swims with the uh, crappie magnet jig heads because the built-in bait keepers were just more convenient, especially when I was out on my float tube and I didn't want to hassle with changing baits as often. However, that Euro Tackle white-headed 132nd ounce tungsten jig head with a pink EPF Swim, that seemed to be the most effective jig head and soft plastic combo I've ever used. So I'm going to put a link down to uh, Euro Tackle's website down in the description below. And that's not uh, a paid promotion or an affiliate link even. I get nothing for sharing that with you. I just want to share that magic with you. Uh, another downside is that they sell out quickly. In fact, the last time I went to go restock what I wanted, they were out. So, don't blame Olkoa if you get over there and they're sold out. Just uh, probably subscribe to their mailing list and they will send out a, a shooter. Wow, I'm never going to be able to restock now, am I? 
You could also probably subscribe to the, the Extreme Philly Fishing channel. He might not let you know too when they're back in stock. So I've shared my favorite uh, weighted jig head and soft plastic combos. I want you to share with the community here at KNFS your favorite combos, or if you've even tried uh, the Euro Tackle one or Leland Lures, to share your thoughts on that. <sighs> Fish responsibly and uh, good luck. Cheers.